Hey guys, so I'd like to talk about this uh, new site Zero Hedge, and I found them a little while ago, quite a while ago, and uh, I think some of their coverage is probably the best out there right now, and they don't, you know, inject their uh, narrative really into anything, and to me they seem like probably one of the best places that you can get information right now, where it's you're not going to be necessarily manipulate that's just my my guess you know I could be biased but nonetheless I recommend you you check them out and one of the stories that I really liked that they had just recently was the five things that the media has suppressed this year just they just really have not covered they haven't given a lot of coverage story time and the first thing is the uh, the war on cops you know hit a new low in 2017 but the number of people killed by the US police remains high the number of police officers who died on the job was at its second lowest point in over 50 years since in 2017, according to data. And, you know, 128 officers died on duty, 44 of whom were shot and killed. Nearly one-third fewer officers died of gunshot wounds this year when compared to 2016. But, uh, <clears throat> while, you know, 47 of those deaths were traffic-related and 16 were due to illness related to the job, so half of them weren't even involved in shootings and a lot of those uh, deaths of traffic related ones are them like chasing people or they're just speeding on their own being fucking idiots and then they die that's just the truth and then but however according to the killed by police database more than 1180 citizens have been killed by police officers in 2017 alone this marks the fourth year in a row that police have killed more than 1,000 citizens in a single year, right? So, you know, that's fucking insane. <laughs> that many people die from the cops. And yes, a lot of them are probably justified, right? Uh, maybe three quarters of them. But a lot of them are like uh, handicapped people, you know, pregnant women and, and like whatever. Like a lot of people who didn't actually deserve to die. And the amount of force that they do use and the amount of f the shit that they can get away with is insane, right? Like, it's very hard to convict a cop of doing anything wrongful, right? Even when it's clear when it's clear that they did. So, or they get a slap on the wrist, right? They just kind of lose their job. So what incentive do you have for, like, good people to go to the police force when essentially a bad person can look and be like, hmm, if I want to kill people, and get away with it <laughs> I can just join the police force really like that's essentially all you really need to do so the way that the system is created now it incentivizes insane people to become police officers I'm not saying all police officers are like this but you know the the, the rate of domestic abuse and all this shit is highest among police officers and like they drink and drive and shit all the time too so it's like these people are no better and this is what happens when you create a monopoly of a police force and there is no competition to do anything better right what incentive do they have to actually reduce crime and to you know do anything like that because what happens when a lot of the crime is gone do you think we're going to keep investing money to employ as many police officers no we're going to cut down, and a lot of them are going to lose their jobs, right? So when you have a privatized system, then you have people competing, and then you have, you know, you, you employ them to keep crime rates low. And when they don't keep crime rates low anymore, you fire them and hire people who do. So this incentivizes groups to always keep crime low, so they want to keep their jobs, right? So whoever has the most efficient police force, et cetera, et cetera, who can do it with the least amount of people, with the least amount of money, and keep everybody the, the most safe, will continue to get hired. And this will help to improve the police over time. That's just my opinion. I know a lot of people disagree. You know, they, they but that's what I think the solution would be. And then they talk about, sorry, the war on cannabis. And uh, they said this year, uh, in 2017 alone, studies were released showing that cannabis has a significant effect on killing cancer cells, 
reducing the need for prescription pain medication, medication, thus curing opioid addiction, can be used as treatment to help prevent HIV from becoming AIDS, has been found to work as a miracle treatment for children with autism, has been shown to reduce seizures for epilepsy in 90% of the patients, it can be used for emergency rooms to treat stroke cardiac arrest, and a new study was found uh, that cannabis could prevent nearly 50,000 premature deaths every year nationwide. So that's just in America. That's not even worldwide. So, you know, keeping this illegal and the media not focusing on this is really just putting money in the uh, pocket of prescription drug manufacturers. So clearly we know who's paying the media off to stay silent on this shit, right? Right, and this also ties in with the police force. You know, the longer weed is made illegal, the longer they're going to need more police officers to enforce these laws, to keep weed illegal, right? Every law you make, you need to enforce that law. So that requires uh, money, hours spent, right? It's just common sense. And in the war in the Middle East with uh, Yemen, they're talking about, so... Something like, after just two years, the death toll from the brutal proxy war in Yemen led by Saudi Arabia and fueled by the U.S. is su surpassed 10,000 with over 40,000 wounded, right? Uh, something like 7 million civilians in Yemen are suffering from starvation, 19 million out of the country, 27 million population are in need of some form of aid, at least 10 million children uh, of the country are, you know, malnourished, right? So... This, this has been getting almost no coverage from the media, which is very fucking telling, right? They, they never show you the shit like this that really matters. They're, they're going to show you fake shit of gas kids in Syria, which I'm not saying those were props, but, you know, they'll put up propaganda like that and, and, and show you dead kids from there to try to get you to invade and do a regime change in Syria, but in Yemen where they agree with the massive starvation, the fucking genocide that is happening over there that Trump is helping and doing, they're, they're silent on it, right? They could be hammering him hard for that, but they're not. So it just shows you that they agree with that. It would be either party would be doing that. So he needs to do something more on that. He needs to put sanctions and shit on Saudi Arabia and do, do more because that is bullshit. And people need to be addressing that and holding his feet to the fire for that. And then there is the war on transparency. So this is talking about the Las Vegas shooting, where 58 people were killed, almost 600 were injured. And the uh, narrative, the story, continues to change. We still don't know what the fuck has happened. And this is crazy, right? Why wouldn't the media be all over this? Why wouldn't reporters be digging really hard to figure this out? Because if they did... They would get extremely famous, right? They would make a lot of fucking money because they uncovered this huge fucking mystery. And it is a mystery, right? 60, like nobody knows what the fuck happened. Are you serious? And the stories keep changing. There, There is something fishy going on, for sure. I don't know what it is, but there's definitely something fucking fishy. And then the last is the war on civil, civil liberties, has continued to flourish, right? So the president signed House Joint Regulation 76 into law August, uh, which passed Congress and with overwhelming support. So both sides, bipartisan, either party would have put this through and voted yes on it. <clears throat> so what it does is it uh, it is a clause that gives the members of that commission the broad authority to conduct warrantless searches of the homes and properties adjacent to the Mitchell Rail system, right? So they're voting on shit. They're, they're extending things that essentially take away your rights and, and implementing new things secretly without the media covering it, which they fucking should be. You should be putting a lot of coverage to this. Don't you think... Uh, losing your rights would be something important, something that they would want to cover. So clearly, they do not have your best interests in mind. Because if they did, they would be telling you this stuff. But they're telling you about Jake Paul, Logan Paul, or whatever, uh, Kim Kardashian, uh, how many scoops of ice cream Trump eats, uh, 
you know, some, some drama here, some drama there, right? It's never the important things that you need to know to make an informed fucking decision. It's just their propaganda and their bullshit. So, like I said, uh, you should check out Zero Hedge, and, you know, I think you would, you'll definitely thank me for it. And if you like my content, subscribe, and have a good day. See ya.